Welcome everyone to the Kindle Report where I share my 40 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share these videos. Thursday's session will be the final session of this week and we have a substantial amount of news coming out before the opening. The employment numbers will be released and are expected to show about 3.2 million new jobs with a slight downtick in the unemployment number. But if you remember last month, they misreported a substantial amount of jobs and many were saying that we should have had a 16% unemployment rate, not the previously reported 13.3. As I discussed in yesterday's video, I thought possibly the ADP numbers might be a better metric to watch than the government issued numbers, but they demonstrated an enormous amount of volatility as they previously reported an approximate loss in May of 2.8 million jobs and now have revised it to a plus 3.06 million or 5.8 million miscalculation in the number of jobs. This is a substantial miss and what it's really telling us possibly that these numbers are nearly impossible to report. Who knows how disrupted all the normal channels of reporting are right now with so many people dislocated in the economy. I saw a report the other day that roughly 50% of everybody is out of work right now. Today they voted to extend the PPP. It looks like this is becoming somewhat of a permanent situation to continue to fund the economy. It's obvious that it's very difficult to actually see what's going on in this economy at all. And now with all the spike in COVID cases and this story starting to reemerge, it just becomes more uncertain. The most interesting thing coming out of the, all of this is that the markets don't seem to be focused on the COVID numbers or the dislocation of jobs or any of this. The market sentiment has improved substantially over the past three sessions and it looks like it's going to continue to stay stable. Maybe there's a disruption of the number that comes out before the opening today, but as I've been discussing, it appears that whether there's a cooking of the books, there seems to be an effort to keep these numbers looking good. And this is even obvious with the silence of the Fed, even though they made a couple announcements earlier in the week that were not material, but nothing that Powell or Steve Munition said and Congress the other day was anything different what they've been saying. So they're continuing to posture to keep the market supported. One of the key elements that we're gonna watch today will be in the technical section as the close today will be substantial, some insight into what's likely to happen over the next several weeks. The fundamentals will rule in Thursday's action and it'll just be interesting to see how all this data gets digested and how market participants actually respond to the news. Let's take a look at the charts and see what Thursday's action and the end of this week is likely to look like. Tonight I'm going to begin by covering the NASDAQ composite and we closed at 10,154. This was an all-time new closing high. We have not printed a price high yet, but we're likely to do this tomorrow. Several days ago, I did a video talking about the NASDAQ going to 11,000. This is still a valid projection. We saw some weakness late last week pushing the markets down into the low, and we saw a new low this week, and now we're about to potentially make a new high. The high of last week was 10,221.85. If we penetrate that today, which is less than 100 points, if we do penetrate this, this will signal an outside reversal. And if we close up above the 10,100 level, this will confirm a reversal pattern and suggesting that we're likely to see higher prices early next week. This is a substantial pattern. Looking at the PPMs, you'll see that PPM1 is 1.63, PPM2 is a plus 0.34, and PPM3 a plus 6.3. These are all very positive numbers, suggesting this trend will continue. Once we close tomorrow and we start the new week, we're going to see the market grid turn back up slightly, which will give us the possibility of going at least to the 10.8 level and possibly as high as 11,100. Now, this should occur over the next two weeks. Taking a quick look at the monthly grid numbers, the month of July has 
a R2 of 10,637, R3 10,943, and the RXT or the Extreme is 11,216. So this is very likely to occur in the month of July over the next two, possibly three weeks. The key level on this chart will be the S1 number, which is 9785. The worst that we're likely to see in this month's pattern is a S1 R2 number, possibly an R3 number. The reality is that based on the configuration, we're not even likely to even get close to S1 at this time. Switching to the S&P Cash, this is the daily chart. I do not have the market grids on here in a minute. I just want to discuss the trade that's been on since the 4th of May. We continue to be long in this. This is a 3.2 daily trade. For those of you using the WaveTech research tool, you'll know that the 3.2 model is capable of taking much more noise. So this sideways pattern we've been in hovering around the 200 day moving average, the model has continued to hold this trade. The configuration on the PPM suggests that it would take a close below the 200 day moving average at this time to kick this model out of its trade. So we're going to continue to hold this. As I put the market grid back on the S&P cash, the key level today is going to be for a close above the 3131 level. If we can get above that R2 number, that's going to be substantial. As I, as I discussed in yesterday's video, the 3147 level is key. If we get a close above that level, we'll retest the June 9th highs at the 32.22 level. We're starting to see momentum increase here. Get a higher close today above the 31.27 level, then we're going to see an acceleration to this breakout and the confirmation of the retest of that 32.22 level. The weekly chart confirms that this is the likely scenario. We'll see that R2 is 31.07, so we've exceeded that. R3 is 31.59. I still don't think we'll get to that level, but with the employment report coming out today, we're, we could see a decent rally as we end this holiday shortened week. But these numbers will be key. There is a reasonable probability that we could move toward the 3140 to 3152 level today, which is an R2, R3 objective. The downside is S1, which is 3104. We could see that some weakness maybe after the report. We'll see how things trade. But today should be an S1, R2 day, possibly an R3. The final market I'll cover tonight is the gold market. We had a substantial move up above 1800 yesterday, and then we just collapsed into the close, and we saw an outside reversal bar. Now, if we close lower today, we could see gold moving down for at least two more sessions. I talked about the 1776 level as a major support. That has been taken out. If we take that level out, then the next support level is 1748. As I discussed in yesterday's report, the weekly charts just don't have the acceleration that a major breakout can happen here. It appears we're going to continue to get this high level consolidation, even though we were able to punch out a new high. We're just seeing a sideways move for the past five or six days with slightly higher highs in the pattern. Now, today will be critical for at least the next two to three days, but that 1748 level will be a, a substantial support. If we look at the market grid for gold this week, we see that we're trading down at that S1, which is the 1767 level. 1753 is close to the 1748 number that I just discussed. That's going to be major support if we continue to decline. We saw an 1807 high. We also see that 1807 was R2. So we printed an R2 high almost exactly. The high was 1807.7. R2 was an 1807.3. And we did see a, a substantial reaction off of that number. Also, you notice that PPM... PPM1 on the weekly has turned down 
and we're starting to fade a little bit on PPM two and three. They're still in a trend mode. We're looking at this market possibly falling back into another trading range and moving back toward that 10 period moving average, which is 1740. The numbers that I talked about a minute ago at 1748 should hold, but there could be a slightly lower move to 1740. In conclusion though, what, what this really is telling us that gold's not ready to take off over 1800 yet. So we're going to continue to see a consolidation for at least another week or two. This will complete the video for tonight. Everybody have a safe holiday and I will talk to you on Sunday night.